one of the most irritating things when it comes to tomatoes is that when they are full size and they will not ripen on the vine or they just won't ripen at all. So today's video, we're going to go over why your plants are not ripening and how to get them to do so. First off, I want to show you something because many of you have been submitting photos of this and my flowers on my tomatoes have kind of like a greening where the flower then pops off. This is due to temperature. It is too cold where you are and that means both nighttime temps and daytime temps. This lack of heat is what is causing these flowers to drop off. So you can expect a lower harvest when it comes to tomatoes this year solely because of daytime and nighttime temps. There are a few big determining factors when it comes to ripening on tomatoes. If even one of these are out of whack, then the plant will prevent ripening. So the obvious ones are temperature and sunlight. The least obvious ones are things like ethylene gas and the quantity in which is around your plants combined with plant stress. That's the other big one here, whether it's being induced or not. So let's talk about temperature first. Temperature has effect on a number of different things, not just the plant and what it produces, but on actual hormones within our plants. So between 68 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius, is when tomatoes like to ripen. Above or below this, carotene and lipazine production actually decreases. And lipazine, if you did not know, is what controls red pigment in your plants. So where I am, the solution is not found because it's been cold. We're talking under 20 degrees Celsius. And I know that sounds crazy, considering where we are at the end of July, but it's true. It's very true. Our nighttime temps are cold. Our daytime temps even are cold. I swear to goodness, I have not actually sat outside and really enjoyed summer yet, which sounds absolutely insane. But this week supposedly is the first week that that is going to happen. So fingers crossed. But that is my issue. So I can't actually buffer against that. The only thing I could do is try to take the edge off by giving it some protection against wind. But there is no wind where this patch is located, so that is not what's happening. Now, if you are on the too hot side, things like shade cloth are going to help bring that temperature down and aid in the lipocene and carotene production that you are needing. Next up is excessive levels of nitrogen and or overgrowth. Now, we'll talk about the overgrowth one in a little bit more detail later on, but number one being that nitrogen. The key is with tomatoes, when you begin seeing them flower, you actually want to pull back on any fertilizer, particularly nitrogen. Now that sounds super counterintuitive considering you've been told phosphorus and potassium are needed for flowers, calcium, magnesium are needed for blossom and rot. Rest assured, if you choose to stop fertilizing now, you will be better off, particularly if you do not know whether or not your soil is deficient. So keep that in mind. The reason why this is important is because the ripening genes that need to be expressed cannot take place in the presence of excessive levels of nitrogen. In nature, think of it as plants are growing throughout the entire season. There isn't much new debris being put onto the ground and decomposed and made into mineral nutrients. That happened through the fall, the spring, and the winter time. So plants in nature are very used to a diminishing level of fertilizer. And if we constantly are keeping them up at what they would naturally think is a springtime level of nu nutrients, it is confusing to a plant, as silly as that sounds. This is probably one of the easiest ways to explain that idea. Next up is poor air circulation and lack of ethylene gas production. Behind me here is very obviously a patch of tomatoes that has not been pruned as of late, and it needs to be pruned. And I've done a number of different videos on how to prune and when to prune and why to prune. So go check those out. I'm not going to talk about that too much here today. But what we need to look at is pruning properly to allow for air circulation without damaging the production of fruits and flowers. So the key is we don't want to remove too much that would then cause sun scorching or excessive levels of heat. But we do want to remove enough so that we don't end up with diseased leaves that harbor things like blight. And we also want to allow for the ethylene gas to be kind of moved around the patch to help with that ripening process, but also enough leaves to kind of keep it ambiently in this space and not just gassed off immediately. So it is a balance, and like I said, I've done videos on this, so go check those videos out. But the quick Reader's Digest of this is that you want to remove any leaves 
first flower down, except for maybe possibly some of the suckers that you want to produce flowers. Going upwards, you're going to remove the sun leaves if they're not protecting any sort of fruit leaving those suckers behind because the suckers will actually make flowers. And then in the next two-ish weeks, we are going to remove any suckers that have not produced flowers. And then in three, four-ish weeks, we're actually going to whack the tops off of all of these to help with that ripening process. But we'll do a video when it gets closer to that time. Now we're speaking about actually pruning our plants and I want to make something very clear. Ripening is hormone dependent and this hormone dependent process is not at all interfered with when it comes to sun exposure. So we want to remove enough leaves that we allow for that air circulation but we don't want to remove so many leaves that we run into sun scalding and flower drops because of excessive levels of sunlight. So don't overdo it when it comes to this. Very important. Next really important one is actually removing diseased leaves. So this one is important for non-obvious reasons. So you're probably thinking, well, yeah, Ashley, it's important to remove these leaves because it's going to make sure that the disease doesn't get passed to the tomatoes. And yes, that is true. Guys, I am a terrible absolutely horrific gardener for the record for the freaking record hi caramba okay ignore it ignore it ignore it stress response ripening is like a very quick way to ripen and it results in like misformed tomatoes blossom end rot tomatoes things of that nature so things that can cause this emergency ripening if you will for the purposes of reproduction because keep in mind that is the why the plants exist they just want to reproduce they don't want to make perfect fruits. It's not the goal for them. But needless to say, diseased leaves or excessive levels of pruning are two ways in which the plant will have a stress-induced ripening response. And then the next one is actually lack of water or too much water. So you don't want to do either one of these because that also will cause a stress response ripening, which is actually how you get things like the cat facings and the blossom end rots. So one of the best ways to actually avoid this is to put a tuna can, empty tuna can, in your garden and water your plants with a sprinkler or a hose or whatever the case is and check on that tuna can. What you want is that tuna can to be filled up once a week. So every Saturday, you want to fill the tuna can to the top and then leave it until the following Saturday. Unless, of course, you are noticing some signs and symptoms of heat stress or water stress. But if you're not seeing that, then yeah. Or if you wanted to and everything's full-sized, you could just pull them off the plant, bring them indoors. Because again, sun does not determine how or when these decide to ripen. They will ripen on your counter eventually. And this may be the choice you make if you have over pruned, if it is in an area where you can't get shade cloth on it and your confident sun scald will happen, or you're looking at the forecast and you live in Canada and you've decided, you know what, she's not getting over 20 for the next two weeks and I want tomatoes. Well, pull off the ones that are full grown, bring them indoors, and then let the magic happen. Anyways, Geek Crew, I want to know where are your tomatoes at? Truly, I need to know where your tomatoes are at. And if you're in the Prairie Provinces or in America, just below said Prairie Provinces, where are your tomatoes at? Seriously, with the temperatures, where are they at? Because I am very disheartened, to say the least, about how horrible my tomatoes are doing this year. Usually, I am the tomato master. This year, forget it. Anyways, Geek Crew, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!